this is a beautiful, this is a beautiful uh, morning. And uh, I would like us to uh, take just a minute and be quiet. Can we be quiet? Just be quiet in our hearts before the Lord. Just take a, a minute and be quiet and hear what he has to say. Successful praying is more of listening. Hallelujah. You look at his face and then your heart is filled with joy, right? Looking at his face, the one who loves you and gave himself for you, gave his life for you. The one who loves you more than anyone else can ever love you. The one who desires you, the one who knows and understands your true value, the one in whose eyes you are priceless, that is Jesus. He said in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5, before I formed you in your mother's womb and knew you. He is the one that we are listening to. And if you could just take a few seconds to say thank you for forming me in my mother's womb. Thank you for making plans for me. Thank you for every thought of your heart for me. Thank you for being my father, my source, my sustainer, my God, my savior, my redeemer, my healer, my salvation. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, for being there for us. Never changing, always the same, full of compassion, with everlasting mercies extended to us. We thank you. Before we realized we were sinners, you had forgiven us. I am bold. Before we realized we needed help, you presented yourself as the helper. We have never been alone, never been abandoned, never been rejected because you, in you, we are accepted in Christ Jesus. Thank you. Before we realize the need to be blessed, You've already blessed us in the Lord Jesus with all spiritual blessings. You are always miles ahead of us. So if we cease to worry, we cease to complain, we cease to fear, and we choose to trust you in the name of Jesus. Your voice is much desired today. And your word with precision, with power, it comes today and it prospers in our spirits, transforming us to your desired image. Much desired you are. Hallelujah. I declare that our minds be opened and our hearts be receptive, and our ears be open. I bind the spirit of distraction, fear, anxiety, doubt, and unbelief, and I cast them out 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I uh, The book of Mark chapter 4 was what we looked at last week. And we were looking at the story, the parable of Jesus, who um, was teaching about a farmer. He used it's a metaphor. He used a farmer, the parable of a farmer who went to the farm. By the way, the reason why he used that parable was because majority of the people in his culture where he was were farmers. So you see, communication does not make sense unless it is well understood because the essence of communication is to pass information. So Jesus used terms in the Bible to portray the heart of the father to his people. He said the farmer went to sow and he, as he was sowing, you know, those days we don't, they don't use John Deere. Some of you young people wouldn't know what sowing is, but it's not John Deere we use that we do. We, we those days people use, okay? All right, we we go with a bag full of corn or millet or rice or whatever, and then the oxen has already broken the ground, and then you the the farmer dips his hand into the basket that is hanging over his shoulders uh, into the bag, and then he sprays seeds left and right, he sprayed seeds. And Jesus says some of them fell on the, on, the, on the pathway. And if you know the history, if you read the history, you will see that, you know, there are back roads to almost every community, right? Back roads, all right, back roads. Okay, I'm not talking about back paved road that we have in Canada. That culture was way different. That was before the roads were paved, you know. And then, some of the crops got picked up by birds. Some of the seeds got picked up by birds. Some of the seeds fell on stony ground and there was no much depth to it, no soil enough for them to sprout and produce, you know, grow it to maturity. So they petered out, withered. Some fell among thorny uh portions of the land because you know when you spray when you swing your hand you are not measuring you just spray everywhere the, the the farmer's desire is that the whole field be covered and the thorns grew as the seeds were sprouting the thorns choked them up and then some fell and then later into a good soil and they produced in varied degrees. So you can see the, the pathway, the stony ground, the thorny ground, and the good ground. Every human being falls within this quadrant. Amen. Every human being, your heart falls somewhere there within this quadrant. When he explained this to them, he talked about how um, the thorny, the, the, first of all, the pathway happens to be this, the heart that receives God's word, but before it could even be digested, kept and digested and believed, the devil snatches it. Amen. This devil, you know, have you heard people say, ah, oh, well, I don't know whether this is uh, something I can do, and they keep it aside? That's the devil right there, you know. All right. And then the stony ground, he said, these are those, the heart that is has no much depth of soil in it. And then the thorns are those who... Uh, the cares of life, the goodies of life. You know, everything has a price. For you to get one, you have to pay a price. Everything has a price. The blessing of God is free, but it has a price. It has a price that Jesus paid majority of it for. 
the part that we have to, to pay is just to make a decision to choose them. Amen. I want to talk to us today about something I call the heart of the matter is the matter of the heart. The heart of this parable is the matter of the heart. The seed was good. There was no problem with the seed. Isaiah 55, verse 10, 11, and 12. He said, so is my word that goes out. You want to open it, please, quickly? And if you are online and you have um, a good mic, could you help me read, please? The reason is, is because it's going into recording. Okay, good. All right. He said, if you have what? And so is my word that goes out of my mouth. Is that not what it says? He said, he says, shall not, Isaiah 55, Isaiah 55, yeah, all right, help me out, please. And so is my word that goes out of my mouth, anyone? Isaiah chapter 55, what did I say? Okay, Isaiah 55 speaks to the nature of the word, amen? It speaks to the nature of the word. Can someone read it for me? Isaiah 55, starting in verse... Um, yes, please. And for as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower. Seed to the sower? Bread to the eater. Bread to the eater? So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. Hallelujah. Turn to me void but it shall accomplish what I please. Hallelujah. Has anyone received the word of God at any point in his life? Any one of us, have you ever received God's word in at any point in your life regarding anything? I want you to know that God was not just trying to make you happy by lying to you. His word carries the intent of his heart. He carries the power to self-accomplish. Amen. But has that word become reality in your life yet? Has it? Some cases we can say yes. Some cases not yet. Am I correct? Yeah. So is it the issue with the word? Is there an issue with the word? Or is there is an issue with the soil that the, the seed is sent into? He says, so it's my word. It shall prosper wheresoever I sent it. it. Shall prosper wheresoever I sent it. And what did he say to us? He said, I came that ye may have life, that ye may have it abundantly. And his power has gone forward to make sure that you don't just live, but you live the abundant life. Amen. Come on, amen. So the condition of the soil can impact the productivity of the seed. But sometimes, instead of focusing on where the problem is, we are focusing on the sower of the seed. Oh, please make the seed work, Lord. Make the seed work. Your word has to work in my life. It has to work in my life. Oh, and he's screaming, say, hey, my son, listen. It's, the problem is not with my seed. The problem must be the soil. Check it out. Oh, hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive it. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ignorance is more expensive and is much to be feared or more to be feared than Satan. Hosea 4, the 6, God didn't say, my people perish because of the devil. He says, my people perish because they don't know. How many of us have fasted and prayed that the word of God will come to pass in our lives? Anybody? Anyone? Please be honest. Anybody fasted and prayed that the word of God will come to pass in your life? God is saying, okay, focus on the soil, check it, check the condition of the soil. Something must be wrong with the condition of the soil. Amen? 
Something must be what? Wrong with the soil. There are three kinds of soil and you'll fall into one of them. If there is no fulfillment or accomplishment of my purpose, of my word, my word is not becoming reality in your heart, though you put it right, though you read it right, though you believe it right, then the soil must be addressed. This is the reason why we need fertilizers. Fertilizers don't grow things. We don't plant seeds inside fertilizer bags. Fertilizers are meant to help the soil restore health. Am I correct? Praise God. Hallelujah. There's another kind of soil we call miracle grow. Miracle grow. Miracle grow. Anybody know about miracle grow? Miracle grow. <laughs> Ever from the beginning, the heart has always been God's concern, the heart of man. In the book of uh, Jeremiah, he says, for the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked. The word wicked, wicked comes from the word wicker, uh, wicker, wicker, witchcraft. That is why in the book of Samuel, God said that disobedience is as evil or grievous as the sin of witchcraft. Amen. So disobedience, which is wickedness in the sight of God, is equal to someone practicing witchcraft. And the Bible says, a witch shall not live. Amen? And what do we do? This is why God, and many of us have, been, have practiced witchcraft in one way or the other. Have you ever disobeyed God? Anybody? Okay, that, that means you practice witchcraft in the sight of God. Amen? But the good thing is, in Christ Jesus, we have all been forgiven, haven't we? Is that, is that not where the hope is? Your unforgiveness, your disobedience, your inability to listen to God has done what? Has brought us into all the same spot. And the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 23, all have sinned and what? And come short of the glory of God. But thank God, God's mercy pursues us, doesn't it? He's running after us. Even while we didn't know we're running away from him in ignorance, he was running after us. And finally, he brought us to, can, we, can you turn to the book of Jeremiah, please? Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter four. Can you look at what the suggestion, the, the command, the instruction, not suggestion, it's an instruction he gave to the children of Israel. What did he say? What did he say? He said here, Jeremiah chapter four. He said, for thus said the Lord, I'm reading from the authorized King James Version, okay? For thus said the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, break up your fallow ground and do not sow among thorns. Break up your fallow ground and do not sow your seed among thorns. L let me, re let me, let me, why was he saying so? Why was God saying so? God had the interest of his people at heart. His word is life. So when the seed comes into your life, into your heart, in other words, he's sending his life to you. Amen. Come on now. When his word comes to you, he's sending hope to you. When his word comes to you, he's sending deliverance, healing. Whatever you desire is wrapped up in the word of God. Anybody wants joy? Look for the word of God. You want long life? Look for the word of God. You want peace in the family? Look for the word of God. Perfect health? The Bible says he sent forth his word and his word healed them and delivered them from their destruction. So God understood that these people are desperate. They are depraved. They lack things. So he said, I will send them my word. But before I send them my word, I want them to prepare the soil. I want them to prepare their hearts. So he said, because if I send it the way you're the, into the condition that you currently are, you are saturated with thorns. And what did he call thorns? What did he call thorns in the book of Mark? Thorns, the cares of this life. Amen. Other things have occupied your life, that your life is saturated with junk and gunk. So get rid of these things so that the seed 
we have space to thrive. Amen. Amen. Now, can I tell you something? The breaking up of the fallow ground is not God's responsibility. Sometimes we, we like to pass the ball. Amen. Ah, if it is God's will, I know he will do it. Yeah, God wants to do it. That's why he gave you instructions. There's a part you have to play. play. There's a part God has to play. Realizing what part is mine, my role, and God's role. So I don't give my responsibility, leave it for God. So the breaking up of the fallow ground, what is a fallow ground? Fallow ground is an untilled, uncultivated land. Amen? A heart that is not broken. Do you know one thing? Many of us came to Christ because we want to avoid hell. It's good. That was what drove me too, from sin to Christ. But after you have left sin and you've experienced salvation, what do you need to do now? You need to get to know the Savior. Amen? Come on now. Because real life is in knowing God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Real life is in knowing God. Real life is in knowing God. Hallelujah. Real life is what? Is in knowing the, the Lord Jesus. Amen. And how do you, the, the John, the book of John, Jesus said, search the scriptures for these scriptures testify, they speak about me. So he says, search them. Hallelujah. In the book of Hosea, chapter 10, verse 12, and I, if we look at the uh, authorized King James Version, it reads this way. It says, sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. So, you see, the prophet Jeremiah, different from prophet Hosea. So that means God is saying to repeat the same thing from another person's mouth. That means emphasis must be given to it. He's given emphasis to it, right? In other words, attention must be given to it. If you see somebody sent to you, send two people with the same message, you better wake up. Amen. He said, fix your heart. The problem is the heart. Problem is not, it's not the seed. He didn't say here, fix the seed. He said, fix the heart. Break up the ground. Fallow ground is an agricultural term. And a fallow ground is a, is a land, is a piece of land that is left uncultivated for a period of time. And when you leave a soil uncultivated for a period of time, what's going to happen? You're going to see all kinds of things grow in there. Amen? They grow there. That is where all the wild animals will go there and, you know, eat, do whatever they like. Sometimes it's good, but if you have a large piece of land, let it rest for one or two, three years, and then move to another area to farm, and let this rest, and let it recoup strength, and let the life come back into it. But for our hearts, we only have one. Amen? And that one heart does not need to rest from the word of God, because it's a, the, the physical uh, analogy that is used is just a type of the picture of our hearts. Amen. He said, break up the fallow ground. He said, for it is time to do what? To seek the Lord. It is time to seek the Lord. It is time to pursue God. It is time to pursue God until he will come. Because when you pursue him, he responds. Amen. When you pursue him, he does what? He responds. It is time to seek the Lord until he comes and then he will do what? He will rain righteousness upon you. Praise God. That's what he said. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament, God has been pursuing man. In the New Testament, he's still pursuing man. Jesus Christ is God's pursuit of man. Jesus is the revelation of how much God desires us. Amen. He did, he laid everything down. He did everything possible, did everything within that, that he can do as God Almighty to make sure that we are won over and we become his children. That is the only hope we have. Can I tell you something? 
to fix the heart is the most important achievement that you can ever do. Bringing your heart, submitting it under the power of the word of God for the word of God to bring it back to life. Amen. When we say, oh, this person has no conscience, what are we talking about? We're talking about somebody whose spirit is dead. It, has, it's not, it's, it doesn't feel, doesn't have the natural human feeling for kindness, for compassion, for goodness. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And that is sin, the cross of sin, the sin, the weight of sin heals the soil. Hallelujah. You know how we throw junk on the... On the way we say that you are polluting the ground. Yeah, some of us don't pollute, don't want to pollute the environment, but our hearts are polluted. Hello, how? How does it get polluted? It gets polluted by the things we listen to, the things we watch, and the things we allow to dominate our thoughts. Amen. Ever so often, the Spirit of God will jolt me back into reality. I said, hey, don't, your mind is going the wrong way. Your mind is going the wrong way. Your mind is going the wrong way. Anybody there? Anybody? Anybody? That is where, okay, good. I'm not the only one. The Bible says that, it says, it says what? He said, the Lord is my shepherd, therefore I do not want. How does the Lord shepherd us? He doesn't shepherd, you're not going to see him like a, a Maasai person with a long stick and then trying to, hey, turn left, turn No, no. He guards your thoughts. He wants you to think only of the things that are, are good. Philippians chapter 4, anyone? Philippians chapter 4. Help me out. Verse 8. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Anyone? If you can help me, if you have a mic. Uh, yeah. Finally, brethren. Finally, brethren. Whatsoever things are true. What's Okay, hang on, hang on a second. Let me just break that down. True. Something that is true may not be truth. All right? Truth is superior to true. Many of us are moved by what is true. We are not moved by truth. God's word is truth. Jesus is truth. He didn't say, I am the way, the life, and the truth. That's not what he said. He said, I'm the way, the life. What did he say? What, help me out. Read that verse again. John 6. What does he say? I'm the way, the what? The truth. The truth and the life. Thank you. I put one, one term before the other. Yeah. I'm the way, the truth. He didn't say I am the way, the true and the life. A fact can be true, but it's not truth. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. Praise God. I heard him say right now, he said, it may be true that your body may not feel well, but the truth is, I took your sicknesses away. Amen. Hallelujah. It may be true that you, your credit card may not work. You are, your bills are overweight, you know, overweight, you know, weighing you down. But the truth is, I took your poverty and I gave you my wealth. Hallelujah. So we never mix true with truth. It says, think on the things that are what? Things that are honest. Things that are honest. Next one. Things that are just. How do we know what is honest? If you brought somebody from, how do we know what a straight line, what a crooked line is? How do you know what a crooked line is? Because you have seen a straight line. Hello? Without knowing what a straight line is, it's impossible for you to decipher what a, a crooked line is. So for us to know what is truth, we have been used to our lives. For us to say, for him to say, think on the things that are honest, because we've been used to falsehood, even among ourselves. God said to the children of Israel, I say, you guys are so deceitful that you even deceive your own selves. 
That's the wicked heart of man. What's the next one, sir? Help me out. Whatsoever things are pure. What, how do you know purity? For you to know what the straight line is, look at God. For you to know what is honest, look at God. For you to know what is pure, God is. He is the original, the original, the organic. Uh, come on, I'm using a term. I don't know how to find another word. You know what I'm saying? He's the, he's the source of purity. Purity. So anything that is ungodly makes you feel a little uncomfortable. Why? Because Jesus, through Jesus Christ, your heart has experienced truth. So when a lie comes, you know. When dishonesty comes, deceitfulness comes, you know. When crookedness comes, you know. So he's saying there are options for you. There's crookedness here. There's deceit here. There's, you know, uh, lies over there. But fix your attention on what is honest. Hallelujah. Next one, sir. Whatsoever things are lovely. Lovely. Aren't you tired of ugliness? Aren't you tired of hearing ugliness, seeing ugliness? Turn the news. Then people shock all the channels we repeated. Why? Because it, it, it injects fear. It makes you sad. Look at what happened in Maine over the weekend. 22 people, one man. Isn't that awful? Do you know why they say that good news runs slower than bad news? Because human nature is more inclined to bad, especially when they are not saved. Repeat that last phase, last one, sir, please. Whatsoever things are lovely. Things that are lovely. Things that are lovely. You know, many years ago, I used to be, when I was much younger, I used to be very analytical. And I wasn't a sanguine. No, I wasn't. I analyzed, and, when, and you know, when you analyze too much, you find many reasons why that you should say no to many things and how you, you're going to detect a lot of ugliness and things. You know, anybody still there? Analyze and are you smiling because you are still there? <laughs> okay, good. I'm joking. I'm joking. All right. But you said some of us are analyze, analyze and analyze and analyze and analyze and analyze and analyze and analyze. And then you are seeing the wrinkles and seeing the crookedness and seeing all the things. And before you know it, you toss it over. No, when, when Christ came into my heart and I submitted to his Lordship, this was what I did. I started to put the word of God in my heart. And since the word took root, it's always summer. Everywhere I go now, to a point where nobody recognized me anymore. I used to be very negative very fearful. And when you are negative in your heart, that means you're an ugly person. But you see, I look good now, don't I? <laughs> Praise God. Why? Because the seed of the word, he said things that are lovely. Fill your mind with things that are lovely. God is lovely. Your source is lovely. He brought you to a lovely place. He's taking you to a lovely place. He said the plans that I have for you are good, not evil, to give you a future and hope. Talk about God to somebody else. Right now, what they are going to say, oh, my sin, my sin, my sin. I hope he doesn't punish me. My sin. Maybe it's my sin that makes him not to hear me. Maybe it's what I did 100 years ago that made him, he's still upset with me. Why? Because that person has not focused his mind on the goodness of the living God yet. Praise God. Hallelujah. We must focus on things that are good. Let, let me hurry over that because of time. Yes, sir. Whatsoever things are of good report. Uh -huh. Next one. If there be any virtue and if uh -huh. there be praise uh -huh. on these things. If there be any virtue, any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. I go to the mirror now and I see my handsome face on the mirror. I don't care. I, don't, I hope you think. I'm, I hope you I'm succeeding trying to sell myself to you. 
All right. <laughs> okay. Look at my handsome face in the mirror. And what do I say? I say, oh, God. Sometimes I say, you must really have a sense of humor. See how you made me. My goodness. Tall, handsome, chocolate. Oof. <laughs> you know, I feel like kissing myself. Can I tell you something? Do you know that some people look at themselves and all they see is a wrinkle? I wish my nose was more straight. I wish my, my, my nose was more broad. I wish my eyes were positioned the other way, you know? Bible says, think on things that are lovely. Can, Bible says you are created in the image of God. If what you see doesn't, you don't enjoy it, that means you're looking at the wrong picture. Amen. Do you know that in the entire world, there has never been anyone that looks 100% like you and never will be? In the entire world, from the beginning till today, nobody will ever look like you and nobody has ever looked like you. Help me with my handkerchief. please. Mm. Hallelujah. You are unique. You are unique. Oh, oh my goodness. Have you ever seen insects? You gotta come visit my house. Have you ever seen insects? Just stand at the back of the house and look at insects. All of them uniquely designed, beautiful in their own, thank you, in their own ways, make unique sounds, eat differently, but each one is proud of itself. And we are supposed to be humans to appreciate ourselves. Yet we are saying, I wish my eyebrow grew all the way around here, you know. I wish I had more longer, you, you see what I'm saying? If my lips were like this, I would have looked better. Bible says, think on things that are good. Do you know why your vision is not correct? I am talking our vision as human beings. Do you know why our vision is messed up? Our vision is messed up because of the nature of sin. When we come into Christ, he saves us, he heals our sight, the eye of the spirit. So you can see things the way God does see them. And that is when now we are able to appreciate things and appreciate what God has done. Hallelujah. Praise God. The heart must be fixed. The heart must be fixed. And the the. The medication for the heart is the word of God. It's the word of God. It's the word of God. Let me round up with these. God saw that man was finding it difficult to fix the heart. Then he said, okay, I need to introduce a new covenant. And then he brought in a new covenant. And in this new covenant, he said, I'm going to give him a new soil. And this one is better than the miracle grow. This one, they don't need to, all they need to do is to water it and they are fine. So he said to them in Isaiah, in Ezekiel chapter 36, Ezekiel 36, if you want to look at it there, verse 25. And then he said, I, in a day is coming. He said, I will sprinkle clean water upon you. What is this? The clean water? The clean water is the water of the word of God. Like the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Amen. The word of God is water that washes, is the detergent that washes the dirt off us. Is there anybody among us that you see, you think you feel there's some guilt hidden somewhere and some pain and some hurt and some disappointment and some unforgiveness and some depression and some ugliness, any, any trace of ugliness, any trace of sour feeling or of, of, of bad smell in your mind, in your heart, hidden somewhere because of how people treated you, because of the bitterness, the hurtful things, the pain you went through in your life, the water of the word of God will expunge it all out. Amen. Come on, amen. Come on, amen. The best makeup is God's word. It doesn't run. You can sleep with it. You don't need to take it off. Hallelujah. The best makeup, and men and women must wear this one. I put it on every day. On the way here, I was actually putting my makeup. I was doing the driving. I said, Lord, this is what your word says, and this is who I am. It's my makeup. It's my makeup. I'm using the physical to 
talk about spiritual things. I hope you understand my point. You dress yourself. See yourself the way he sees you. He said, I will sprinkle clean water upon you and clean you from all your filthiness. Oh, my goodness. Woo! Thank you, Father. He said, he will clean me from all my filthiness and my idols. Idol is anything that you gave your attention to instead of God. It could be your spouse. It could be your child. It could be your job. It could be anything else. Sometimes we become our own idol. You understand what I'm saying, human beings? All right. He says, I will, I, and from all your idols, and I will cleanse you. Verse 26 says, and a new heart also I will give you. Can you see? A new heart also I will give you. He's not telling you to now go break it. He say go, he say, 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 go till, go cultivate. No, that's not what he's saying. He said, I'm going to give you a new heart. And what else? And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you an heart of flesh. And I will pour my spirit upon you, which is the rain, the symbol of the rain. All right. All right. Oh, my goodness. And I will, pour, and I will put my law. Verse 27 says, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to do what? To live in my statutes, to walk. In the King James Version says walk, but that word walk means to live in my statutes. And, you will, and ye will keep my judgments and do them. So the word of God will not become cumbersome to you anymore. It won't become something like, oh, can I do that? I don't think I can do that. I'll just forget it. God will have mercy on me. You know, some, some, sometimes you look at God's instruction and say, oh, that is too much. That is too heavy. I better not make a promise because I don't want God to be upset with me. Praise God. Hallelujah. God said, I'm going to give you a new heart. But before that, I will wash you with the water of my word. Amen. I will wash you with the water of my word. Then I will lodge into you a new heart. And when I put that new heart into you, that heart, you, that, that heart will have the appetite for my word. We will have the desire for my word. And then I will pour my spirit upon you. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. Come on. And then that means you will now begin to enjoy my word, my instructions, my instructions. But for, for those of us who are kind of new in our church here, guys, welcome. You know, for those of us who are new in our church here, you're going to see whether online or here in person today, you're going to see that we lay so much emphasis on the word of God. You know why? That is the only thing that doesn't change. And that is, the, that is God's singular medium of interaction with us. Amen. We practice so many other things that are good, that are also written in the word. But anything outside the word, we don't have time for it. So when you are seeing, we're talking about the word, the word, the word, the word must be your go-to. The word must be your hiding place. The word is your flashlight. The word is your breakfast, your lunch, and your dinner. The word is your pillow. The word is the, your, closer to you than your wallet. Amen? It is the word. When you stay in the word, you become all that God intends for you to be. When you stay in the word, the, the devil cannot hoodwink you. You know what hoodwink is? All right, good. It's not a... Right, it can trick you, it can deceive you. All right, if you know when you stay in the word, you know what God has freely given to you by His Spirit. Amen. The word makes you to develop the mindset of God. Woo! That is, isn't that exciting. The word puts you in a place where you are able to communicate with God, that your life will be pleasing to God. When you live by the word, you live a life of victory. Praise God. So when he said, and your new heart will now be responsive to my word and you become a doer of my word. He's talking about the effect, the result of the word. And remember, the word is also the seed. Remember? Praise God. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 33, says something here. He said, but this shall I do. This shall be the new covenant that I'm reading from the uh, authorized King James Version again. If you have the King James, yours is not authorized. Only mine is authorized, okay? <laughs> all right. Okay, good. All right. The, it's called the authorized King James Version. All right. It says, uh, Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 33. It says, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. 
After those days, said the Lord, I will put my law in their inward part. What is your inward part? Your spirit. Amen. Come on now. Your spirit is your inward part. Your spirit. Okay. I, I got I to gotta stop here. He's telling me to say to us, okay? God is just tell, telling me to say, many of us are reluctant to push ourselves further. Okay? Reluctant to push yourself further. You know what to do, but lazy to do it. Amen? M many of us are lazy to do it. And can I tell you something? I have been there too. It doesn't pay. God... <laughs> Anything that God tells you to do is from A to Z for your well-being. There's nothing he's going to gain other than seeing you happy. And I think, talking about follow ground, I think that area we must have to break up with that, break it up. Amen? Sorry, I'm pointing like this. I'm not talking to you. I'm just stretching my hand, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm speaking generally. Follow ground. Follow ground. Follow ground are the things that you used to do before, but you don't do them anymore. You've, you've let that to rest. Follow ground are the things that you desire, heights you want to attain, that, but you feel like, can I do it? Can I do it? Maybe I postpone it. I keep postponing it. I keep postponing it. And then we postpone and postpone and postpone and postpone. And then before you know it, we start to develop. Because time is passing, right? You know, this one grows. The other one changes color. The other one changes. And before you know it, there's a line across the face somewhere because you keep postponing. You see what I'm saying? So in other words, what I'm saying essentially is we're losing time. Let us, let us make a decision to pursue what God, make a decision today to pursue what God wants you to do. Amen? Come on, amen. Live, live, live. Choose to live. Choose to live. And real living is doing the will of God. Real life is doing the will of God. The Bible says in the book of 1 Samuel, he said, for the Lord looks, he said, man looks at the outward appearance, God sees the heart. When he looks right now and he's looking inside your heart, what kind of a soil is he seeing? What is the condition of your heart? Amen. What is the condition of my heart? Because he looks at all of us. Before I came to share this word with the family today, I said to the Lord, I'm not going to take this word out anywhere to share with anybody unless you first walk on my own heart. I need you to walk on my heart. Amen. Even when you think that you, 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 have, you have taken one step, there are a few more steps left for, to take. So when you think that at least I know John 3.16 now, I can quote it. God say, yeah, that's a good start, but you still have a long way to go. Amen. So let's not be easily satisfied and say, yes, I think I have a right. None of us has a right. Amen. The people in heaven are still discovering the fullness of God. Amen. There are great plans that God has made for us here, things he wants us to achieve. When he sent us and formed us in our mother's womb, he formed us, he has a plan for us. Philippians chapter 2, 10 says, he says so that we can do the works that he has created us, that he, he for, that he were made for before the foundations of the world. So before God laid the foundation of the earth, he drew, he drew out a plan for your life. Isn't that amazing? What a planner. What a planner. No wonder the devil is left and right, night and day, not wanting you to Follow God, because following God means he, he is going to lose ground. Following, if you decide to, to follow God, it means you will stop him. You will fulfill your, your purpose. You become successful. And he cannot by any means 
have you succeed because he's threatened by your success. How many of us today will say, I'm going to go give attention to the word? Anybody? How many of us will say, it's time for me to return back to the good things I used to do before? Right now, we say we don't have time for this. We don't have time for that. Then what do you have time for? What do you have time for? That means you don't have time to live God's life. That means the life you are living is the life of the devil. If you are too busy for God's life, you'll be living for yourself. And that is a frightening thing. Amen. Nothing is wrong with the seed. If there is any change, it is the soil. And today, my hope is we will go before the Lord and, and allow him to replace the soil, the heart, with the heart of flesh. Amen. Come on, amen. Do you know that it's possible for born-again Christian, speaking in tongues, baptized, to also have a heart of stone? You know it's possible? It's possible. Okay. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Can we ask the Lord? Ask the Lord. I want a new heart. I want a new heart. I need that new heart, Lord. The heart of flesh, a heart that is eager, the heart that is willing to obey you, a heart that is submissive to you, a heart that recognizes and yields to your lordship. A heart of flesh makes the husband treat the wife lovingly and with great honor. A heart of flesh makes it easy for the wife to submit to the husband. You know, living in this, what do you call this age, 21st century, where men wear pants and women wear pants. That is our society. I'm not talking about physical pants. But the, the culture, the principles of God never changes. He set the order. A heart of flesh makes you love your neighbor and forgive one another. A heart of flesh delights in the law of God. A heart of flesh is generous, is forgiven. A heart of flesh shuns evil and desires and pursues good. We receive this heart of flesh this morning in the name of Jesus. Every correction that you need to make, Heavenly Father, make it in me. Make it in us. Make it in us. Have your way. It's not just words that we speak from our lips. Our hearts are saying the same thing. Give me a new heart. Give me the right spirit. I submit to you. And I repent of all forms of wickedness. Thank you, Father. I receive now. I thank you for forgiving me. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, anyone you know in your heart that you have something you need to ask someone for forgiveness, please go ahead and do it. Amen. If you need forgiveness or you need to offer forgiveness, go ahead and do it. Can we just, can I take a minute, sir?